Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. I'm Dash Brandon and today we're going to be talking a little bit about patch 4.0. Yes, I realize I am late. That is just the way the cookie crumbles around here and we're going to get into it. First off, event llamas were changed last patch so that as long as you have at least one ticket in your inventory you will get another llama when the patch rolls over. Simply have to go to your loot tab and you'll be prompted to open it just like normal. An important bug fix has been implemented that lets you ignore gamepad input. This is found in your settings. This is mostly aimed at people with disabilities that map controller inputs separately from keyboard inputs. This can also make it so that you could play another game while you're waiting for a radar timer to tick down. My choice lately has been Cuphead. So that's going to let me play a little bit of Cuphead while I'm waiting on my radars. There's a new metallic looking husk that you'll find in your missions now, your defense missions. Um, from what I've seen, this husk has at least one extra life. I've seen it take three deaths before. I'm not sure if it's always three or always two, but I've seen it die at least three times. So once you kill it, you ought to hang around and kill it a couple more times. It shows up with a boss skull and I believe that it drops materials but I could be wrong. I can't remember off the top of my head right this moment. Many bosses now drop schematics and upgrade material caches. And in the higher levels, in uh, Canny and Twine, you have a chance for better loot, such as legendary schematics. Everyone in your party would get one of these schematics and at the end of the mission and you would open it and it would be great. So that's really, really cool that they implemented. The teleporter gadget has been changed and reworked, as well as the hover turret. The hover turret appears to be much better now as it is hit scan, recharges faster, and has an upgraded range of eight tiles after upgrades. The rate of fire and the rate of fire and duration were reduced. Shut up, Windows. <laughs> I don't know if that was recorded. The rate of <laughs> The rate of fire and duration were reduced to balance out these buffs, but I've heard that it can stunlock a smasher and is amazing right now. The teleporter is now dead to me, uh, and it makes me sad all day. It can only be used on friendly players. It no longer teleports enemies. Upgrades let you send friendly and enemy projectiles through it. Um, one nice thing about this is you can use the event rocket launcher, the noble launcher, to uh, continually go back and forth in a tunnel, though of course you would set off a uh, propane at some point if it ended up going through a propane. And um, you can also put it on a roof to take lobber shots away according to the devs, but personally I find that kind of hard to do. Both are really small, yeah. neither one, well, the teleporter doesn't cover the whole roof tile. And if you put on the, the triangle or peaked roof, I don't think you can even drop it there, but I could be wrong. I haven't tested that part yet. There are currently nine new heroes. One is a mythic and is available in the store. It is the Raven skin that was previ previously released on Battle Royale, and he's pretty fun. I uh, tried him out today in an SSD, and uh, he... Benefits from using a pistol, uh, it reduces a cooldown of his special ability called lefty and righty. Um, I believe that one of the, that the soldiers also have that, the two other new soldiers. <laughs> um, and I'm not sure if he's going to be a meta pick, but he's definitely fun to play and his tactical gives explosive rounds to any class. The other eight heroes fall under the shadow ops moniker and there are are male and female versions for each class. There are also epics, and those alternate between being male and female. There's not a male and female of epic and legendary. The soldier subclass is called Double Agent, and they are said to benefit from pistols and have explosive rounds. They have a tactical that can give other soldiers cluster bombs on their grenades. I personally want to use one of these once I open my 20 llamas for their tactical with the Raven Soldier. Ninjas have been given 
a piercing lotus subclass. The subclass focuses on spear usage and apply, applying poison dots to enemies with shurikens. Their support bonus increases heavy attack damage by up to 30%. Which, I mean, who uses heavy attacks most of the time? They're, they're largely garbage. But maybe they're trying to fix that. Outlanders have a shock gunner class and can reset the cooldown on their phase shift by eliminating three enemies within 10 seconds of shifting. Passing through enemies with a phase shift applies a three second stun. That's right, Outlanders can now phase through enemies, which was a much needed buff. Their support increases shock tower duration by three seconds when used with a charge fragment. Constructors are receiving the Demolitionist class. That's right, we're going to get an Explosive Weapon Specializing Constructor. This class gathers enemies with decoys and then is going to use a rocket or grenade launcher on them to finish them off. They lose less Explosive Weapon durability while standing on base affected tiles and reload Explosive Weapons 35% faster. Sounds pretty good. Sounds pretty decent. So, on to a few other things. Hero abilities that lock a hero's movement can no longer be interrupted by knockbacks. This includes Shockwave, Phase Shift, Bull Rush, Dragon Slash, and Anti-Material Charge. I cannot tell you how many times I've gotten knocked out of a Dragon Slash and it usually gets me killed. So that's a really nice change. Decoy has been fixed and reworked. It now lasts 7 seconds and is invulnerable. Shadow Stance now triggers off of all melee kills. Um, one of my friends thought that the decoy was a nerf, and I told him that I would rather have a 7 second decoy that is invulnerable than a decoy that could last 12 seconds, but dies in two hits from a husky. So... <laughs> that pretty much ended that argument, and he admitted that that was probably the best way we could go. The blockbuster event is upon us. It did not, unfortunately, bring a new game mode, as many people speculated. It is another storyline-based event, and the main way that we're going to be getting tickets, actually the only way we're going to get tickets, besides the quest line itself, is by purchasing llamas, non-event llamas, obviously, or by doing mini boss missions. You can now do 10 mini boss missions. You have 10 cooldowns per 24 hours, up from 3, and storms have been reduced back down to 3 cooldowns from 10. Speaking of the llamas, the cost of most of most, if not all, non super llamas has been reduced. To compensate players that have spent a lot of V Bucks in the game, Already, they have given out an appropriate number of troll stashes to those players. So, I myself received 12 or 13, and I was pretty stoked about that. I was pretty happy, and I hope that you guys are also happy with okay, that. I'll probably check that. The new event llamas have the eight new heroes and five, I want to say, weapons that can be obtained from these llamas. The new weapons appear to be a silence pistol, pistol, an SMG that operates like an assault rifle, a crossbow, a semi-auto shotgun, and an assault rifle. That's what I gathered from the patch notes. Their patch notes, as far as weapons go, have been kind of spotty for me, though. So, there's that. Many llamas also now drop gold. Typically, you will get 30 to 50 gold, unless it goes silver. Once it goes silver, You'll get extra gold. I've gotten up to about 110 personally. And you get an extra item when it goes silver. Mini llamas are now a really, really good way of farming gold. There's also now a gold cap of 5,000 gold that you need to spend. And if you're above that cap, you need to spend that gold before you can get more gold. On to weapon changes most. People have actually largely ignored this. At least the people that I hang out with in Discord. Yeah. Um, most, if not all, snipers have had their ranges increased and no longer have damage fall off. Hopefully this will help snipers to be a little bit better at dealing damage. Um, I think that it's going to work out pretty well for the snipers. That's just my personal call. 
And this pretty much sums up the patch notes, with the exception of some bug fixes and things of that nature. I will link a I will link the official patch notes in the description of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. A like and subscribe would be super appreciated. I'm Dash Brandon, and I will see you next time.